talk a little bit about um, formal approaches for automated security evaluation. So to get us started, many of our most critical systems are becoming increasingly large, increasingly complex, and more and more interconnected. So when we think of things like critical infrastructures, energy grids, medical uh, uh, domains, uh, maritime ports and transportation, when we think of nuclear reactors, communications, uh, military defense, all of these systems are now increasingly dependent on a lot of cyber components, software, controlling physical components. So this falls under the category of cyber physical systems. And this brings us a lot of trouble in trying to identify where these systems have security vulnerabilities. So when we think about these complex and interconnected systems, we can look at a maritime port, for example, and we can just see the sheer size and complexity of a single port facility. And then when we think about this in terms of port facilities interconnected with each other, it doesn't take a, a big imagination to just see how intellectually un unmanageable that these systems become. So when we think about trying to evaluate the security of this system, we want to answer questions of how secure is a system like this? Well, that's not an easy question to answer. So we say, well, this system's composed of a number of different components. Are each of the components secure? That is an equally difficult question to answer. Then we start asking questions like, well, how secure is secure enough for a system like this? What, what security measures do we have in place? What security measures should we have in place? And you start asking all of these kind of questions. And the unfortunate thing is you don't really have an answer to these questions uh, immediately. So what has happened is we've started performing security evaluations. And Really, this is sort of to g give a background. Security evaluation involves a number of different things. Uh, and basically, what it's trying to do is look for compliance with a set of standards or specifications. And you do this by uh, performing a number of different activities. So it could be something like analyzing the system designs. Uh, you could be doing simulations to observe system behaviors. And this is the case for a lot of anomaly detection techniques that we heard about this morning. Um, or it could be actually doing penetration testing and trying to actively attack these systems to identify where these vulnerabilities might be. So when performing a security evaluation, often when we have an evaluation, we need to evaluate against some set of criteria. So there are several major sources of security evaluation criteria, some of which uh, people in the room may be familiar with. The most common being the common criteria um, for information technology security evaluation. Uh, and then there are some uh, very country or continental specific uh, evaluation criteria as well. And depending where the jurisdictions of these systems are, they need to be compliant with each of these uh, standards, so to speak. Um, so security evaluations aim to address those questions that I was asking about the port system. So how secure is secure enough? What do we need to do to improve our security? And really, this comes down to a question of, well, how do we measure the security of a system? So the current state of the art really involves a number of different activities. And not a single one of these activities is sufficient on its own. You really need to do a, a variety of things. So you have things like threat modeling and risk assessment. And this helps you to identify the increasingly important security requirements that a system might need. Um, you have the, the quote-unquote checklist frameworks that say, well, you have all of these assets that need protection. Are you applying appropriate uh, security mechanisms in order to protect those assets? Um, you start getting into the measurement uh, area when you start looking at attack surfaces for systems, and you start identifying the, the, the vulnerabilities when you look at, at penetration testing, for example. But then we come into some... Uh, rather different approaches, which involves assurance cases and, and more formal approaches. And what these aim to do is provide systematic arguments that will support security claims about a system. So when I say that I have a port system and that system is secure, I need to provide some evidence that that claim is actually true. So what assurance cases and formal approaches help you to do is structure these arguments to make these proofs and the formal approaches will help you to actually 
gather the evidence required to support those claims. So when it comes to evaluating security, there are a number of different challenges that we have. The biggest one is really what needs to be evaluated and who needs to do the evaluation, right? These are two questions that it isn't entirely clear and each company or organization with these systems tends to have a different answer to these questions. Um, the unfortunate thing, and this has been reported by the Department of Homeland Security in the United States, is that security evaluation is largely an ad hoc process and generally, generally relies on these manual, non-exhaustive approaches. We just try to do whatever we think we need to do to say, yes, our system is secure. Uh, what this tends to do is ignore the fact that we have security requirements that are technically complex, and these kind of requirements are not well or widely understood by the people doing these evaluations. The unfortunate thing is that most organizations will perform a security evaluation in-house using whatever methods and techniques they think they need to use, and it's not publicly available how that evaluation actually took place. So what this means is that the, the quote, real evaluation often takes place in the, the consumer environment by collecting statistics and really trying to identify the threats and prevent any sort of uh, uh, attacks during the live operation. And what we find is that this is often too late for us to do anything significant about because the damage is already done at this point. Um, so largely, security evaluation is difficult. It takes time and it costs money. So what we need to try to, to work towards are more incremental, modular, and compositional approaches and automated approaches. So the idea behind the, these kinds of approaches is that when we look at a maritime port facility, we can't just say, well, we're going to try to prove that that system is secure. Well, no, it's too big, it's too large, it's too complex. We're not going to be able to do that. So we need a way of breaking that system down. So performing security evaluations on the components of this system out of a granularity that's manageable, such that once we prove that each of the components are secure, we can then say, because this component and that component are secure, when I put them together, the system formed by that combination is also secure. And this is not an easy problem to solve because as we know, security is really an emergent non-compositional property. Even though you prove the security of two components, it doesn't necessarily mean that there isn't going to be some emergent behavior once they start interacting with one another. So we need to try to converge towards these kinds of solutions. And simply because these systems are so large and so complex, we need a way to ease the, the amount of manual effort involved with these kinds of security evaluations. So Ashraf actually pointed to some of this um, when he was uh, introducing the, the panel here, and it's that relatively little research has been done on system evaluation methodologies and specifically with regards to how to measure security, so measures and metrics for security. Often what we have is a lack of these measures because the research community still finds it more interesting to talk about identifying novel attacks and defenses rather than actually measuring security. So what we find is we no longer have a way to compare security products, for example. And this is more, most exemplified by saying when you have a piece of software that has one bug in it, that's not necessarily 10 times more secure than a, a piece of software with 10 bugs in it. And we really have no way of, of measuring these sorts of things. Um, to make problems worse is that we don't even really know what tools we need to use to measure security. Um, there are a number of tools available and they, they each work, but they measure different things for different reasons and it's not always clear which to use when or why. So, what I find is that there's a lot of focus on solving past problems when it comes to security instead of anticipating and preventing future threats. So this really plays into that cat and mouse game that we all know when it comes to security. Is It's much easier to say, well, we were attacked this way last time, let's patch that up and we're good to go. So our security is better tomorrow. But we're not thinking ahead to what those future threats might be. So how I postulate to 
address some of these problems is to really use the idea of formal methods. And formal methods refer to mathematically based techniques for specifying, developing, and verifying software and hardware systems. So why formal methods are good is that they can be applied to guarantee important security properties and detect potential vulnerabilities in the system. Um, formal methods will give us systematic frameworks upon which we can build security evaluation methodologies. And this would be capable of verifying and validating important security properties. And this would come straight from the requirements of the systems that we have. Um, why formal methods are useful is that they really give us that supporting evidence that helps us to, to substantiate the claims that our system is in fact secure. Furthermore, formal methods offer very good approaches for automating these, these techniques. Because they're based on, on well-established mathematics, it becomes quite straightforward to implement these in software tools that will automate the security evaluation. So you may be sitting and saying, well, really, why formal methods? Well, the use of formal methods has been pointed to by uh, DHS in their cybersecurity research roadmap for many years. And as Ashraf mentioned, I've been working with DHS over the last few years. And the problems that are cited in their research roadmap are still the same problems that they have today. So they are mentioning that formal verification and other analytic tools need to be able to scale and will be critical for building systems with high assurance. We need to have uh, formal theories that support the prediction of the trustworthiness of a system. And this includes modeling, simulation, and formal methods, for example. And we also find that the potential utility for formal methods has significantly increased over the past few decades. Um, there was a time where someone like me would stand up here and advocate for formal methods, and everyone in the audience would scoff and say, it'll never happen. Formal methods don't work on anything more than 10 lines. Um, but now there's a, there's a push for this kind of approach for any place where we can demonstrate that it can be effective. So what I've done in my research is try to uh, actually show this, to demonstrate that formal methods can be effective for performing security evaluations. So when we think of a formal approach for a security evaluation, we really are looking for a way to facilitate the development of a trusted system. So we're not going to guarantee that the system is 100% secure. What we're going to do is guarantee that it meets the security requirements for that system. So if that requires a very high level of assurance, meaning that it needs to be just about as hard of a system as you can have, then we need to provide evidence that that's the case. So a formal security evaluation methodology will typically consist of that set of requirements that describe the security functionality of the system, a set of assurance requirements that will delineate the steps that you need to establish that the system actually meets those requirements. So this is really that, that argument that will support the claim. You need a methodology for determining that the system actually meets those requirements based on the analysis of that assurance evidence. And you need an, a measure of the evaluation result. So once you've done all of this, you need to actually say, well, as a result of my evaluation, are we more or less secure than yesterday? So in order to look at this in action, I'll, I'll discuss a, a recent research work that I've done uh, that was looking at performing these kinds of security evaluations for a specific kind of vulnerability in critical infrastructure systems. So when we think of critical infrastructure systems, they consist of numerous components and even more interactions that are required for all of these components to orchestrate their behavior so that the, the system does what it's supposed to do. And unfortunately, because of the size and complexity of these systems, some of these interactions may be unfamiliar, unplanned, or unexpected, or simply not visible or not immediately comprehensible by the actual designers of the systems. So what we call these interactions are implicit interactions. They're the ones that aren't explicitly meant to be part of the system. They're not needed to do actually perform its functionality, but they're a byproduct of the size, complexity, and intellectual unmanageability of the systems that we develop today. So as part of this security evaluation, we need to develop formal frameworks for modeling and specifying systems and their security relevant properties. 
We need methods for identifying the existence of these vulnerabilities by analyzing system design. So you'll recall that as part of a security evaluation, one of the activities was analyzing the designs of the system. And we need to develop simulation environments that allow us to understand and predict the system behaviors in the face of security issues. So this refers to observing the system behavior activity of security evaluation. So once we've identified that a vulnerability might exist in this system, it becomes very important to analyze that vulnerability to determine what can actually go wrong in this system. And this provides actionable information for actually determining how to mitigate such vulnerabilities. And lastly, we need techniques for measuring and evaluating the severity, exploitability, and impact of attacks that are mounted or launched using the vulnerabilities that we detected. So in order to perform this evaluation, we first developed a model uh, for the systems using a mathematical framework. So as part of, of this mathematical framework, uh, we use an algebraic approach and we use an algebra called communicating concurrent and Collini algebra. I'm not going to bore you with all the details of the math today, so we'll jump right ahead and based on the system model that we developed using that mathematical framework, we develop a formulation that allows us to identify the existence of these implicit component interactions. And this is done by examining the potential for communication amongst all of the components in the system. So it does a systematic search of the system communication and then identifies against a, a uh, set of intended interactions. So the in interactions that are part of the system design. And this goes along the lines of the signature-based um, detection that we heard about uh, earlier this morning. Once we've identified that some of these implicit interactions exist, we need to actually evaluate them. And this involves classifying and measuring the severity, exploitability, and impact of these interactions. So the, the idea here is that you find that a number of these interactions exist in your system, and you only have the time or resources to deal with the three worst offenders, even though there might be 10, for example. So we need to give a way of saying, well, these are the three worst based on their exploitability and the potential impact in the system. So for example, one that may just cause a light to blink on and off of a control panel, if exploited, is less severe than something that would cause a complete nuclear meltdown, for example. And knowing which is which is vitally important. And lastly, we need to develop software tools to help automate this evaluation. So we've developed some tool support that given the system model will automatically uh, identify these vulnerabilities and perform the analysis to give us those measures. And this slide just gives a very short sample tool output for a typical manufacturing cell system. Um, so what it would do is it looks through all of the possible uh, interactions that have between the, the components and it gives you a measure of the severity and for each one that is identified as an implicit interaction also goes through and calculates what the attack scenarios are and what the actual exploitability is. And what this does is it gives us a measurable way of saying this particular vulnerability, if exploited in this way, could have serious consequences and we need to do something about it now, not tomorrow, not the day after. Whereas you may have one that that you find to be less severe and you could maybe delay it if time and money is of uh, concern. So just to summarize this, we find that there's a significant uh, fraction of the interactions in a system like a, a simple manufacturing cell to be implicit. And really these result from the potential for out of sequence messages or reads and writes uh, to uh, variables by system agents. And this could be done either because there's a cyber attack that has caused one of these components to go rogue, so to speak, or it could be a natural failure of the system that's leaving it susceptible to, to exploit. And in doing this work, we're demonstrating that there's a lot of hidden uh, complexity and coupling amongst the agents of the system, which then leads to the potential for unexpected system behaviors. And that's something we really don't want. Um, so while this example is presented in the context of, of a manufacturing cell, analogous communication um, and dependencies are found in nearly all these kind of complex distributed systems. So the technology of formal methods, when applied to security evaluations, really augment 
current evaluation methods and tools. So it's not meant to replace threat modeling or uh, computing attack surfaces. It's meant to augment these sorts of things. Um, and really, it's meant to help automate these traditional processes of security analysis and testing. So it's meant to facilitate from identifying the security requirements to having an evaluation of the system. And as I've mentioned, many of these formal approaches aim to collect the required evidence to prove or demonstrate that the system in question satisfies the security claims or goals. And recently there's been uh, advancements showing that these kind of approaches can be successful in doing this. Um, so as part of the future research endeavors with this uh, idea of formal approaches and security evaluation, we're looking at developing cybersecurity assurance cases and how to actually gather the evidence through measures and metrics to prove security claims, looking at things like automated code analysis to uh, generate semantics aware security policies with which we can validate, looking at the development of adaptive security systems and security intelligence. So how can we have a security monitor based on its observations of the system automatically update its behaviors so that it can uh, continue to verify compliance in real time and looking at automating the uh, identification of system interfaces which this is a, a big problem so we're looking at how uh, accessible system interfaces are whether they're intentional or unintentional or adversary induced and lastly there's a lot of work to be done with the management of security requirements. So how do we manage security requirements as they evolve over time? And this is a, a major challenge as well when it comes to these sorts of things. Uh, so I'll wrap up with this. Uh, there's a lot of references that we have related to this work. Um, and really this idea of identifying the implicit component interactions. But the idea is that that same sort of formal approach can be applied for any sort of security property of your system. It just requires that the mathematical frameworks be in place in order to do so.